Hello friends, welcome to a new watercolor tutorial. I am Vanidas Mangathil. Uh, in this tutorial, we will learn how to make this uh, bright, colorful watercolor scene. I will explain the entire process uh, during the video. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do subscribe and uh, press the bell notification so that you get notified when, whenever I upload new videos. I am planning to upload new videos every week. So without waiting, let's go to the video. So here I am using a cold pressed watercolor paper and it's around 300 GSM. I am wetting the paper first and as you can see I am using a synthetic mop brush. I am using a, a Skoda Ultimo brush. It's a mop brush number 14 I believe and I am wetting it at least top around 60%. And while the paper is still wet, I am applying a, a, a wash of uh, uh, cerulean blue color here. So you can see that the, the color is getting spread. I am adding a little bit uh, darker version of it so that we get some color variation there. Okay, so I am just trying to see how I can make some sort of a clouds. Uh, here, um, since the water is, uh, the paper is wet, uh, we don't need to worry too much about the accuracy. And here I am using a little bit of, uh, say, cobalt blue for some sort of a faraway mountain sort of thing. And I am allowing th things to merge actually, if you can, as you can see, the top edge of this, uh, the faraway foliage or mountain is merging. And the bottom edge of that, I am keeping little sharp. And... Uh, I am now wetting the paper, uh, the bottom portion of the paper so that we can start suggesting some grout with a sort of wet on wet treatment. I am using the same, see the blues I am using are uh, mainly cerulean blue and uh, cobalt blue. At places I might use ultramarine blue and here uh, the, the colors that I am using is from Brustro. Uh, uh, it's a Brustro uh, watercolor cakes, watercolor pan. Uh, but that shouldn't matter if you're following along. You can use any any brand colors, cube or pan. Uh, the idea is to get uh, the the right shade and the right amount of uh, I mean tonal value. I'm I'm leaving a very thin white. I mean. Uh, around the horizon just to create some sort of interest and to avoid some of the merging of colors. See the foreground I am using uh, more sort of uh, ultramarine blue uh, uh, and uh, probably I will I will tend to make it little darker. I am still using the same brush uh, Escoda Ultimo brush. Uh, you can use any more brush okay you don't have to specifically go for this brush. Uh, here I have mixed a little bit of uh, indigo sort of color and now I am using, I am mixing it with, uh, I have mixed it with uh, burnt sienna. So it is kind of a, a, an earthy color, a grayish brown color that we are getting. Uh, I, this is from imagination. Okay, so I really do not know what exactly is the scene going to be. I'm at this point I'm splashing some uh, a pale uh, mix of white okay I'm using a little bit of white and putting some water and I'm splashing it down there so that once dried you get this kind of uh, uh, a texture there here I'm planning to do a sort of imaginary house or some structure uh, because uh, Somewhere in the uh, in the back in the foreground uh, in the mid mid area, the white region that is left out, I feel that could be converted into some reflecting puddle of water. So to make that reflection possible, I am making a house there. So this is a red roof. I have used uh, uh, maybe uh, permanent red. Uh, it's a kind of a warm red and then I use some darker version of it uh, mixed by mixing it with a little bit of burnt sienna. 
and uh, yeah this is just an idea okay there is a roof and some walls uh, and some some sort of uh, a tree maybe and you can i'm using a, a round brush again from escoda it is escoda prado 8 so actually i am using a, an alvaro uh, watercolor brush set from escoda and these are part of the set so first i have defined some foliage using the side of the brush and uh, that gives me some kind of a random shapes for the foliage and now i am trying to put in some branches in between and some darker leaves maybe so here you can just think of uh, i mean how you could convert this into a convincing tree so we can add a lot of uh, branches the, for the branches i am using smaller brush uh, for the better control of it and uh, I am also using darker tones. I have, maybe I have mixed the, the olive green and uh, maybe a little bit of red uh, for the branches. And for the foliages, for, I have mixed uh, uh, yellow ochre and olive green. So it's a, the tree is made of uh, yellow ochre, olive green and a uh, little bit of red for the darker mixes. Right. I think the tree is reasonably convincing now. Maybe a little bit of touches here and there to get some additional interest. Okay, the paper is little textured. It's a cold pressed paper and that has some textures on it. So that texture gives a little bit of uh, white sparklets in between and that creates interest. Okay, I think I think this is reasonably good now. I'll not uh, fiddle it uh, too much now. Drawing trees a little, little, little tricky. So you don't do it a lot. I mean, you don't overwork it. Uh, you just suggest it. I think uh, that is fine. And I am adding some shadows. Okay. So if you are finding some value in it, and if you are finding that uh, these tutorial videos are useful, please. Uh, subscribe to my channel and press the bell notification you will get uh, more videos coming in every week so and uh, if you have any suggestions or questions please put them into the comment box below your comments your shares and your likes will help me taking this video into a larger audience and uh, it will be more beneficial for other watercolor aspirants uh, like you so now this is the reflection that I am making. It is the reflections are always uh, sort of uh, mirror reflections. And uh, now the white area that we have earlier left out, that looks like uh, a puddle of uh, water, clean water probably. And uh, see these reflections help to define the water well. Uh, yeah, I think this much is sufficient for uh, the reflection we don't need to overwork on this and let us make some darker portion of the under roof area for this particular uh, structure and since it is from imagination we need to think okay what makes more sense and what what we should do and what we should we shouldn't do okay now this could be a small kind of an, a door or uh, maybe something, yeah, could be a door under the shadow and uh, maybe I think some sort of a suggestion for some windows uh, in the shadow. Uh, we will not make it very precise, uh, we will make it just suggestive. See, we have so many options because we are doing from imagination, we have a lot of options and uh, it is up to uh, I mean, as what what we sh what we should pick up, what idea we should pick up. We may get a lot of ideas. We should pick up what makes more sense to us. Okay. So depending upon what idea you pick up now, the subsequent uh, how the work gets developed will depend upon the decision you take now. So it's it's a series of decisions that you make. The outcome end outcome is a series of decisions that we make now, and a uh, little bit of. Uh, I mean, playing with uh, colors there, and so that it sort of 
adds to the illusion that it is water okay some 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 touches on the roof to avoid the blankness of it right i think this area is looking good now we don't have to uh, fiddle too much or uh, one if something is already working good i think we will better leave it that way we don't do it we don't work too much uh, to create i mean uh, to create trouble uh, see what happens is that if certain things are suggestive and if it is reading well better we leave it there if you do if we keep on working on that we might tend to overwork right maybe some couple of figures here maybe one no, maybe i'll make another one uh, maybe with uh, slightly different colors it is uh, see i always uh, like to add figures into the scene because that establishes a connection with the viewer and it helps in creating stories so this will help the viewer to think probably what they are doing what they are thinking what they are talking uh, we people start viewers uh, will start thinking of uh, uh, what these people are actually doing so that that will kind of uh, engage them in engage them and retain their attention to your work and that thereby increasing the chances that they like it they sell they they, they buy it okay so We'll try to add figures into the into the image right if you're not very confident on adding figures uh, uh, you have to practice it and there are a lot many videos on my channel already uh, which tells you how to paint figures there are a lot of practice videos uh, this area on the right uh, i'm feeling it as a little blank so i'm adding a smaller house there i'm not keeping it as bright as the 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 main house that is there uh, i'm just adding slightly darker tones and so that it doesn't get too much of attention okay so this much of uh, suggestion will do and we will add couple of uh, trees there all right uh, some bunch of small trees uh, maybe and the approach for this tree the color is used and the overall approach it is very similar to that uh, that of the the main tree that we did earlier uh, just some suggestion for the foliages and some branches and it it doesn't even need that much of uh, clarity because it is something in the uh, far away something in far away and this is sufficient i feel it is reading well and uh, i can probably add some more touches of red to make it little uh, attractive but not too much attention there and now i think some shadows can help because the ground was looking little blank empty and yeah i think that is fine uh, i'm i'm not sure if we should do something at the center and the horizon area here so i'm just making some touches i really do not know what it is it could be some visual element and uh, something in the foreground maybe some maybe piece of rock uh, just to engage some area of, of your work it is not very well thought out idea i just thought on the fly that okay i let let us let me make a piece of rock there it is up to you i mean it's an imaginary work so what you add what you decide to add is i mean your decision if you are following along and if you don't want the rock there you can you can skip it okay i am now adding some touches of pure white watercolor pigment so that some of these elements i get popped up and grab more attention okay i think i think uh, i think that is uh, the figures are reading better now and some touches maybe here I, you don't overdo it it is very easy to overdo so please uh, don't overdo it uh, be little careful i have a tendency to overdo it and i'm sort of uh, <coughs> being careful here i think we have done it uh, okay i mean it is pretty readable and uh, thank you for watching this video i uh, hope this video was uh, informative to you and if you found it useful informative please do subscribe and press the bell notification
and let me know if you have any comments any questions or suggestions please put them into the comment box below i will try to respond as quickly as possible so thanks again for watching my video and we'll see you in the next video bye